Derita, derita, derita. Stop, stop, stop. Ok, ok. Hop, 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 hop. No le mueva. Las paragus. Hey guys, what's up? This is Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. So in the video today, I'm going to discuss basically what I use to study for my OBGYN EOR and also my OSCE. So what is an EOR? EOR is your end of rotation exam. This is during your clinical year. This is an exam that you have at on the last day of your clinical rotation and it's about whatever rotation you're going over. So for example, in this case, it would be OBGYN. Uh, it's about anything that you would see in OBGYN, whether it's breast issues, pregnancy, um, vaginal bleeding, etc. So you'll be tested on these things. Um, then you have your OSCE, which is basically you have a patient that is simulated and you are required to go in, see the patient, they'll give you a, a blank page with the chief complaint. It's a very vague complaint like abdominal pain, abdominal pain or vaginal bleeding or vaginal pain or something just very, very vague. You have the patient's name, the date of birth, you're required to calculate the date of birth and also the vital signs. And you have a professor in the room that's grading you and you're required to diagnose the patient, uh, obtain a proper history and physical, do a physical exam, um, treat the patient accordingly and provide appropriate patient uh, education. So these are the things that you're tested on and then you're given your grade. Now for my program, both of these, the ER and the OSCE are 80%. One's worth 40 and the other one's worth 40. So that's a big chunk of your grade. I know other programs may have different uh, weighted percentages, but for my program, it's 40 and 40. So 80% is a lot. So that's why you wanna make sure that you do very well. Because if you get a 70 on either exam or even a 60, that's gonna put you at a high risk of getting a C or a D. So that's why it's really important that you do well on these exams and you know how to prepare yourself. So that's why I'm sharing these tips for you, those of you who are about to start the rotation, are in clinical rotations right now and don't know how to study, etc. So EORs in general, end of rotation exams. Basically, the exams are written by the PAEA. So it's a national committee that comes and writes these exams and they are given to every single PA program. So all the PA programs, students that are in the PA programs during the clinical rotation are taking the same exam as you. So you go to the PAEA website and you just Google, you can put EOR topic list and you'll go and there will be a page and it'll have every clinical rotation. And you click on, for example, OBGYN and it'll give you a topic list. So it'll give you basically what topics are going to be on the exam, what you expect to see on the exam. Now, some of these can be very specific, like for example, public inflammatory disease, which is very specific, but some of them can be very vague, like abdominal pain. And abdominal pain can be so many things. So you have to make sure that you add a lot of differential diagnoses to your, um, to that vague, like abdominal pain chief complaint. So that's one of the downfalls. But what I do is I usually just stick to this topic list and I study it. Um, one of the books that I really recommend is the PAEA and a rotation book exam. I'll add a link below. Um, it's really good for OBGYN. It's basically divided by rotations and it'll have, <clears throat> for example, I would go to the OBGYN page and it'll have, it's divided by, um, for example, breast, uh, um, pregnancy etc and it's divided and I just read that back I think I read it like twice so I really really recommend that for OBGYN has all the topic lists and it's all broken down for you so you don't have to be looking for the information back and forth um, sometimes if I didn't understand a certain topic I would go and use osmosis so osmosis I really really recommend especially if you're a visual person I really really recommend osmosis osmosis has a lot of good videos and also they have videos geared for each rotation so you can go and search for a clinical and then they'll have uh, the OBGYN and they'll have videos specific to certain complaints or certain diseases like pregnancy how a normal pregnancy is uh, the menstrual period about pelvic inflammatory disease, breast cancer, etc. And they'll have really good videos. They start with the patho pathology, the physiology, the symptoms, how the patient's gonna present, the diagnosis and the treatment, so it's really good. What I would do is I would take pictures and I would add um, the pictures, the screenshots to my notes and I would just study that because I'm a visual person. 
Also, I really, really recommend their flashcards. Uh, what I did is that you have to create your own flashcard deck. So I went through the topic list and I added, I searched on their flashcard, because they have a lot of flashcards, and I just added these to my flashcards. So I really, really recommend these because what they do is that Osmosis kind of just tailors the flashcards towards what you know or what they feel that you lack of knowledge and they'll repeat it over and over again. So that's why I really like their flashcards. I really use their flashcards and I really recommend them. Also, another thing that I recommend is that if you're an auditory person, if you like to work out, if you have long drives, you have to you walk your dog, etc., I really recommend podcasts. The ones I recommend are OBGYN Pimped. It's really good. I'll add the link below and it's free. It's basically a OBGYN resident and she just talks about OBGYN topics. So, for example, one of my weaknesses was um, birth control. So what type of birth control this is to give to a specific patient, the different types of birth control, how they work, and she really really explained that topic really well. So I really recommend her um, her podcast. I will listen to them on my way to my clinical site, whether it's 10 or 15 minutes. I mean it adds up. It's really good. And uh, whenever I worked out, or had time to work out, I would listen to it. Or if I wanted to take a walk outside, I listened to it. If I was cleaning, I would listen to it. So it's really good. It just re forces it so I really recommend that podcast so I'll add the link below another thing I really recommend is um, online medit it's really really good it's basically a doctor that just sits in the video and just um, teaches but his mode of teaching is so simple I wish I would have purchased this during my didactic year unfortunately I just found out about it because one of my subscribers actually mentioned it in one of the comments and I love it and I really really recommend it also um, they have really really good videos so what I would do is if I'm reading the book and I don't understand something and I've read it several times I would go and look at it on osmosis or either online method so I really really recommend online method um, it's like a membership it's about $40 a month if you buy the year membership so it's a little expensive but I really really recommend it another thing I really recommend is that during the five weeks the first three weeks I spend time relearning the information so sometimes some of the things that are on the topic list I never learned during my didactic year so I'm having to go back and relearn this so um, I would use a book osmosis even YouTube YouTube has some really good free videos so if I felt like I still don't understand it after watching Osmosis and Online Medit, then I would go and watch a YouTube video. But basically those three weeks, I'm just relearning the information over and over again. And then on top of that, doing my flashcards because it's all about repetition. Now, the last two weeks, what I do is that I quiz myself over and over again. This is through questions. So question banks that are really good is that I really recommend Smarty Pants. Smarty Pants has really good practice questions and their questions are usually pulled from previous PAEA exams that have been um, have been leaked so you're able to see how the questions are going to be the type of critical thinking you're going to need to answer these questions and I think they have like two or three exams uh, for um, your for your OB-GYN EOR so I think that's really good you have a lot of questions to practice on each question has an explanation so I really really recommend Smarty Pants for the practice questions I just love Smarty Pants I use it for my didactic year and it was a lifesaver and I'm still using it for my clinical year so I really really recommend it also another one which is basically I would say my favorite and if I had to get between Smarty Pants and Rosh I would get Rosh Rosh review is really good I'm gonna add a link below they also have exams tailored for the um, specific exam that you are taking. So for example, for OBGYN, they'll have an OBGYN exam. 120 questions, that's how many questions you get. You get 60 and 60. Basically, out of the 120, only 100 are going to be uh, great. The other 20 are just practice questions that they throw in there to see if they can use for the pants. And it's kind of annoying because, it's like, depending on your program, um, you don't know which questions are or practice questions or not so you have to make sure that you try as you're taking each question you try and make sure that you are getting them correct um, but yeah so I use Rush Review for that Rush Review is amazing I will add a picture so you guys can see it, it has questions and it has a really good explanation and then on top of that it has pictures for every explanation that you have and it's just awesome because with the repetition you're seeing the same type topic over and over again and you're seeing that picture over and over again if you're a visual person like me i would see myself when i'm taking these questions and i couldn't remember 
for example, the physiology of the menstrual cycle, and I just remembered that picture that Rosh Review had, it would help me answer the question. So I really recommend Rosh Review. Rosh Review is amazing. If I had to get between Smarty Pants and Rosh Review, I would do Rosh Review. But I just, I love taking practice questions, and it's the best way that I can test myself and see where I am lacking. So that's why I have both of them. But I really, really recommend Rosh Review. Um, also, Smarty Pants for your practice questions. So for OSCEs, it's all about repetition also, guys. What I would do for my OSCEs is I would just practice over and over and over and over again for the, um, for the, for the patient encounter that I had with the patient. So I would just talk to myself, whether it was practicing with the patient, uh, I'm sorry, a classmate, or practicing myself in the mirror. I would just practice on a pillow for the, how to do the physical exam, the abdominal exam, uh, the pulmonary exam, cardiovascular exam, etc. And doing, I think the hardest part is doing the history and physical, making sure that you ask the correct questions, making sure you ask the past medical history, the family medical history, the social history, whether you drink or smoke, and you review a system. So making sure you ask the correct review systems um, for whatever chief complaint it is. And it really is all about repetition, 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 and that's what helped me out. But yeah, I hope this guy, this video helped you guys out. I know that when I started taking my, my first EOR that I took for ER, I didn't do well at all. Um, the reason was because I didn't know what to expect. The questions are completely different. They're at a higher critical level thinking. And that's why if you go to PAEA and you look at their exams, it'll even tell you what is the average for that rotation. And you know, sometimes the average is range between 77% to 80 one percent or 83 percent so they're pretty low and that's what scared me a lot um so that's why you have to make sure you're very very prepared for those exams i actually ended up doing very very well on my ob -GYN exam i actually got higher than the national average and i think it was because of the studying technique that i finally put into action after my first fail i didn't fail but my first bad grade in my er end of rotation exam and so i tell myself you know what i have to start changing the way i study to make sure i get better grades and that's what i did and it worked out for me so first three weeks make sure that you're understanding the information you're relearning it in the last two weeks make sure that you're just quizzing yourself over and over and over again another thing that helps you with the quizzing is that you'll see what questions are very very commonly asked like I saw questions that were repeating on Smarty Pants and were repeating on Rosh Review and I made sure that I made a note of that topic because it's gonna be very highly asked on the exam and it was so that's what is really good about repetition also podcasts like I said whenever you're driving it's really good um, whether you're a person likes to work out uh, likes to walk outside has a dog walks them etc it's really good also learn a way of reinforcing the information but yeah, I hope you guys like my videos. As always, if you guys have any comments, any questions, any feedback, make sure you comment below. Any questions for me personally, make sure you email me and I will contact you as soon as possible. Or you can just go to my Instagram page, which I have below. All right, guys, thanks for watching my videos and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.